Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and today we're going to be talking about this beautiful nova that you can actually see in the night skies right now. Because the astronomers recently confirmed that the recurrent nova known as RS of Ayokai has once again exploded and produced enough light to be visible from planet Earth. Something that it's actually done previously many many times. So let's talk a little bit more about what's happening, where to find it and also how to actually see it in the night skies. First, let's start with the theory the recurrent nova. And obviously a quick clarification, this is not a supernova, the star itself is not exploding, something else around the star is exploding producing light. And in this case the name nova comes from the early astronomers that actually noticed something unusual in the night skies, a visiting star. A star that appeared out of nowhere and would then disappear after some time. And so they refer to these unusual events as nova. The original astronomer that came up with this name, Tycho Brahe, was actually looking at this, and this was a supernova, but back then the idea of nova and supernova were more or less interchangeable, they refer to these unusual stars appearing in the night skies. And so the names themselves are not actually very good at explaining what's going on inside those star systems. A supernova usually means a star exploded and very likely produced some sort of a neutron star, a black hole or disappeared completely. That's exactly what Brahe saw back in 1572. But we knew for decades now that something entirely different happens in these nova. Nova, first of all, are less powerful. And they usually do not destroy the star. Actually, we don't know of any that destroy the star. But they're still extremely bright and visible from very far away. Here's how they usually work. There's a larger star known as the donor star and the white dwarf. They're usually close together. As the white dwarf siphons off all of the hydrogen from the donor star, it starts forming the accretion disk around itself. Now obviously we don't know what it looks like, but the artistic representation sort of shows it like this. Now sometimes this goes on for many many years, thousands and millions of years. And in that time white dwarf starts to accumulate a lot of mass around itself. And if the white dwarf keeps growing in mass and becoming bigger and bigger, it will eventually explode as a type 1 supernova. But before the supernova occurs, a lot of other miniature explosions start happening for another reason. At least around some star systems. All of this happens in the accretion disk itself. With the accretion disk accumulating so much mass and creating so much dense material that at some point the pressure and temperature inside of this disk becomes so great that it actually starts a nuclear reaction. And because the material being siphoned off is hydrogen, this becomes a hydrogen bomb. Usually all of this occurs around a temperature of about 10 million Kelvin which ends up producing an explosion large enough for a lot of telescopes to witness it and to analyze the details. But that's a regular nova, today we're talking about something known as a recurrent nova, a nova that keeps repeating over and over and over again, essentially restarting every time enough mass accumulates in the accretion disk. And here it's a star binary known as RS of Ayukai, located in the constellation of Ophiuchus. Here's the last time this star went nova, this was back in 2006. And this particular recurrent nova is probably the most well known, simply because it's done it so many times, also because as you can see from this image it's relatively regular, on average happening every 15 or so years, but also because of the other 10 recurrent nova we know of in the Milky Way galaxy, this one essentially is the easiest to catch and easiest to see. It's also one of the brightest. And this time it was caught once again by an amateur astronomer, Keith Geary who caught it on the 8th of August with the Nova itself reaching the peak magnitude the day after on August 9th. And pretty much right away everyone jumped on trying to analyze what's happening here. For example his visual observations were almost instantly confirmed by the gamma ray observations from the Fermi telescope, something that is usually done when we detect a new Nova or a new supernova. Then almost right away there was also a discovery that a lot of the ejecta from the Nova were not just moving fast at speeds of about 2700 km per second, but were also accelerating. Follow-up observations calculated the speed at about 4800 km per second. But a lot of the materials being thrown off, being hydrogen, oxygen, magnesium, but for the most part iron. There's a lot of iron that was created after this nuclear explosion. But because this event is 4500 light years away from us, it's still not really that bright. It still looks like a typical somewhat dim star. In other words, don't expect to see something like this. If you are going to look for this and if you're going to try to find it, you're going to see something that resembles this right here. This is an actual photo taken a few days ago. 
Something that's going to last for probably a few weeks, but something that's going to disappear for another 15 to maybe 20, maybe 25 years. But because this particular explosion seems to be a lot brighter than usual, as a matter of fact 7 magnitudes brighter, this recurring nova right here at the moment is one of the rarest events you can witness in the night skies. Remember, we've only found about 10 of these objects in the entire galaxy and only a few of them are known outside of the galaxy. And so personally, I definitely jumped on this in order to find this myself. Now how would you find this? Well, it's actually pretty easy. Let me show you how to do this using a free tool known as Stellarium. The link for this is in the description below. Now you can do this on your laptop, you can also do this on your phone, or you can download this as an app, but I'm just going to do this through Stellarium Web. But no matter what you do, you're going to see something that looks like this. Here, once you choose your location, you can sort of see everything around you and even zoom in and see some of the coolest objects you would never see otherwise. As a matter of fact, every single star, every single galaxy and even some of the asteroids, all of them are accurately represented in this particular app. Now we are looking for a constellation of Ophiuchus. Once you click on it, you'll see something like this. Now specifically, we're looking for a star known as RS Ophiuchus. And interestingly enough, it's already represented as a nova in Stellarium as well. Here, if you type RS of Iacus, you'll see where this nova is located pretty much right away. And zooming into it, you'll even see what the images sort of look like if you were to look at it with the relatively large telescope. And here, if we keep zooming in, we'll even get to see what the binary system sort of looks like. Here, the white dwarf and the larger star orbit around one another every 450 days or so. Although in this case the distance might be outdated, the object is very likely about 5000 light years away from us. And so this is sort of how you can find it yourself by using your phone or any other tool, assuming you live in a dark enough environment. But on that note, that's all I wanted to mention and all I wanted to explain in regards to these unusual events known as recurrent nova. Nova themselves do happen quite a lot in other galaxies, but the recurrent nova are kind of rare. Anyway, on that note, thank you for watching, subscribe if you still haven't, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, and maybe come back tomorrow to learn something else. Maybe support this channel on Patreon by joining the channel membership, or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.